It ain't the left side or the right side. Then it must be the fin side. Inside. It ain't the left side. Left side. Thank you, Solo D. Welcome to another episode of On the Fin Side here with Kat and Paul. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. I'm Brian Cat NFL on Twitter. Paul is fanatic underscore pick. My uh, typical microphone isn't quite working here today, so I'm doing this more from my landline. But we have a special guest here. We're joined by Saray Poole from the Draft Brawl podcast. He also covers the Chargers in the NFL Draft with thefirstpick.com. So, Ray, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Good. Thanks a lot for joining us here. So I've got to ask, with you following the NFL draft, take us back to April. The Dolphins had the fifth pick. The Chargers had the sixth pick. Who was your preference at the time between Tua and Herbert or somebody else? And what is your pre- preference now here in November? So in April, uh, I was a huge component of uh, the Chargers trading up for Tua. I had Tua as QB2. Obviously, Burrow was the one, and uh, Herbert was three. I was higher on Herbert than a lot of people was. Herbert got a lot of unwarranted hate during the process. But I wanted us to trade up for Tua. Um, Even with the injury, I I thought he would fit well with what we wanted to do on offense. Uh, Right, Rivers goes on to the Colts. Um, Now, I'm happy it it panned out how it did, right? We got the quarterback at six. We didn't have to move anywhere as far as, you know, giving any uh, draft capital away. And Herbert's panned out, man. I was – I'm I'm happy that uh, it panned out the way it did in terms of him coming in. And I know um, a lot of people didn't think he'd be ready to to play right away. And I was one of those people who thought he wasn't uh, ready to play right away. But I'm happy we stuck with Herbert, and I'm happy he's playing well, man. If only we could, you know, keep uh, find a way to win some ball games. Yeah, I'm – and I've got to admit that you said unwarranted criticism in the draft for Herbert. I'd be lying if I didn't say I was one of those people. Uh, yeah, you know, it's not that I didn't think he'd be a good quarterback. It's I didn't think he'd be great. And now here I am looking at his stat line. He's completing almost 68% of his passes, over 2,100 yards, 17 passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns on the year. And he didn't even play the first couple of games there. So, you know, it it looks like everything that – he was criticized for, you know, maybe a lack of touch, maybe a lack of feel for the game was definitely overblown there in April. I agree. Um, I think if you go back and just watch, you know, the tape from when I was breaking them down, a lot of things that people said was they don't know if uh, the mental aspect of the game is what he was ready for. Um, they, a lot of people kind of the same thing when Marcus Mariota came out of Oregon um, you know, these spread offenses are you know, look at as negative now. And I'm not really sure why. It's the way the NFL is going these days, man. It's it's pass, pass, pass. Look at the Chiefs, man, a great example. Um, there are very few little teams who are a run first offense now. And I think that Oregon didn't ask Herbert to do what he's good at. And that's a vertical passing offense, you know, stretch the football, throw the football down the field and make big plays. You know, the Chargers are allowing him to get on the move. There's more design quarterback runs in the offense. There's a lot of stuff that Oregon just didn't allow him to do. I mean, he was very good at Oregon, don't get me wrong, but I think it just took the correct offense and the right coaching to get the most out of Herbert, and that's what we're saying with the Chargers now. Certainly, and this next comment, uh, don't take it as trash talk before the game here, uh, <laughs> but the Chargers are the best 2-6 and six team I've, I've ever seen, and I've got some evidence for that. Uh, you look back, starting, what, five weeks ago, they're up by 17 to the Bucks, and and Bucks come back. They lose to the Saints in overtime at New Orleans in Monday Night Football. They beat the Jaguars, and then the last two games, they lose on the last play of the game to the Broncos and the Raiders. So Herbert's a star, and the Chargers obviously have a very good receiving core as well. What do you think the Chargers need to do to put a win on the board here in in the upcoming few weeks? Man, uh, you you put a great point on it. Realistically, the Chargers should should be 7-1, and right? And um, the outlook on Anthony Lynn and Gus Bradley is a lot different. A lot of people wouldn't want them gone. But when you're not winning ball games, not only this year, but you know, in the, since 2019, the Chargers are what three and 15 in, in close games, dating back to last year, 0 and 9 of division. So it's man, I, you just got to finish games. I think a lot of what the issue is is that Anthony Lynn, we come in the first half, he's aggressive. You'll see him going forward on fourth down. Um, you're starting to see Gus Bradley send more pressure. He's not just sitting back in zone coverage. He's starting to find ways to get the team successful, but I don't know what it is. I don't know if the, if the second half we just don't have the same competitive edge. We're not. We're not. We're not. From, from my knowledge, from when I watched the games and go back and watch the all twenty-two, in the first half 
we're playing and coaching to win the game and we're, we're aggressive and the second half we're just laid back we're not playing to win we're just we're just coasting through and then we we let teams back in games and we, we we don't shut the door on them and then we we're in a position where we've got to make some miracle plays you know to to, to win a game and obviously we're, we're not built for that right we're not the team to sit here in the fourth quarter down five seconds to go and we've got it every single week i shouldn't have you know every Sunday I have to watch this team either come from behind or blow a lead and then you lose on the, on the last play. So I really think it's just be more competitive. I think that the coaching has been seriously conservative coming from Anthony Lynn. And I think he's not, he coaches to lose is what it looks like sometimes. I think he just needs to get back to his competitive and, and, and his aggressive nature. Cause that's what got us in 2018 when Rivers was here that we won those close games. We won 13 games sure. and we won a wild card game in Baltimore on the road. It was the same exact thing, except for the the, the switch was flipped. So I think he's got right. to get back to being more aggressive. That's all it is. Yeah, and and looking at his his options to be aggressive with Keenan Allen, uh, I think he's got 64 catches on the season. I mean, we're we're eight games into the season for the Chargers. So he was on pace for 128. Uh, Mike Williams at the other side, also a very fine number two guy. Hunter Henry at tight end. I mean, Herbert certainly has the options, and I think that's such an underrated part of the quarterback spot is that you've got to, you've got to give him some weapons when he comes in instead of asking him to make the weapons. I, I agree. Um, and I don't, I don't even think, man, I don't even think that the offense is really the issue, man. I, I think it's more of a, a defensive thing, man. Go, going back to the most recent, you know, loss before the Raiders was the Broncos game, right? Everything was going well. Defense looked fantastic in the first half and Drew Locke and Denver explode for 28 points in the second half. <laughs> Yeah. Right, that's on the defense. Herbert can only do so much. Keenan Allen, Hunter Henry, those guys can only do so much. And I, Herbert can continuously go out there and throw for 300 yards and three touchdowns. But if the defense can't get a stop, it 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 does nothing. That performance we have, we have two wins to show. Really, one win because Terod Taylor was a starter. We really have one win to show for how great Herbert has really played. Yeah, and the biggest bunch of bunk that you'll hear from from people who were down on Herbert before the draft. I'm not going to say it. But it, what they'll say, which is complete bunk, is that, well, uh, uh, you know, Herbert couldn't win the big game in Oregon, and now he, the charges are two and six. I mean, look, when, you, when, you're, when you lose 30 to 27, 38 to 31, 31 to 30, and 31 to 26, I mean, it's certainly not the quarterback or the offense's fault. It's on the defense for that to happen. Um, so looking at the defensive side of the ball, ball Saray, you know, they lost Derwin James in, in the preseason. He's on injured reserve. Um, what's gone wrong on that side of the ball? I honestly think um, on paper, man, the Chargers have one of the most talented rosters in the NFL. And um, obviously every year the injury buck hit, hits the Chargers and it's, very unlucky, man, right? This is two years in a row Derwin James is on IR, right? Hunter Henry had the ACL last year. Keenan Allen had some issues last year. Um, it's just defensively, I really think that we've got to be more versatile, man, right? We traded up for Kenneth Murray, which I kind of thought was a mistake. I thought tackle was a bigger need, but I guess they took the best player available approach, which I can't argue with, but given up what they gave up for him, um, I, I just think we've got to be more versatile. It right? doesn't help that you're missing such a the best play, in my opinion, the best safety in the league when healthy and Derwin James, right? So you're losing a lot of talent and versatility there. Chris Harris goes down with an injury, right? Then you trade away Desmond King. Um, it's the the free agents you've brought in on, on the defensive side of the ball and the players you've had on the roster just aren't healthy, right? Um, mm -hmm. Kenneth Murray is, man, I, I like Kenneth Murray. His, his strength is not to be in, in pass coverage. That's not his thing with the – type of defense we play we play a lot of zone coverage I think we're just not asking him to do what he's good at he's a run and chase player that's that's who Kenneth Murray is I think what's going wrong is man is we just got to be more versatile we have to give teams different looks I think that Gus Bradley is known for his his zone style type of defense when he did it in Seattle he did it in Jacksonville Jalen Ramsey came out and said dude in Jacksonville we ran the same coverage the same plays people know what you're running right you've got to start to switch it up and I think he's understanding that now. You start to see more third down pressures. It's got to be something like that. You've got to trust your secondary, whether the injury's there or not. There's still some talented guys. Play more men coverage. You just give up some different looks. I think just sitting back in zone all day is what really hurts the team. And, um, you know, it, the pass rush is good. Both is getting pressures. Ingram's finally back now. So the, the guys, man, I think injuries had a lot to do with the defense. But now it's just that it, we just got to give different looks. I think you've got to just throw some different yeah. sets out there for teams to just, you know, see different stuff.
So at defensive back, you mentioned Chris Harris and, and Derwin James on, on IR. Desmond King traded away. Uh, where where do you see uh, the Chargers? Uh, can you break down the Chargers secondary for us? Where, where, who, who should we expect to see out on the field there this coming Sunday? Uh, Michael Davis uh, will be starting at corner with me, my, my guess. Uh, Casey Hayward, obviously, still playing at a very high level. Rayshon Jenkins, uh, Nasir Adderley, and I think Adderley has been a bit of a disappointment for all, for, for everybody, honestly. Um, but I, I think that for right now, that's what you see. You, you're going to see uh, Trayvon Campbell, number 37. Jalil Dye is back, so he's wearing number 36. Those are, those are going to uh, be the main guys, man. Obviously, Casey Harris is, uh, Casey Harris is the number one corner. Casey Hayward, excuse me, is the number one corner. But um, I think that's really it, man. I think um, for, for what Miami likes to do on offense, right, it's a lot of quick game RPO because that's what Tua excelled at. Um, they like to leak tight end out a lot on offense. Um, I, I really think that the receiver room in Miami is a little shaky. So, but it, it, it's going to be a weird game. I don't know. I think that Casey Hayward should be following the number one receiver in Devontae Parker. Um, you can match up Michael Davis with Preston Williams. Where I think Mike Gusecki is going to be a huge problem for the Chargers defense because Rayshon Jenkins is uh, he's, he's, a, he's a liability in coverage. Um, so we'll see what happens, man. But those are the main guys you should be looking for. You bet. It's a great breakdown there. Uh, on the defensive line, Joey Bosa was out last week with a concussion. They got Melvin Ingram back a couple of weeks ago. Jerry Tillery has taken a bigger step forward here in his second year. I guess my first question is, you know, we're, we're recording this here on Wednesday, um, Wednesday afternoon. Uh, do you have a feeling one way or another on Joey Bosa if he's going to be available for Sunday? It was reported today that he's doing individual drills. So um, he, they said he's still in concussion protocol, but he's obviously, it sounds like he's moving forward. Obviously, you still have a few days to get through pro, uh, protocol, but it sounds like a positive that he's going through individual drills today. Um, so as far as I know, that's what, I, I, what I've got on Joey Bosa. Uh, hopefully he can pass a protocol. Um, but the way the league has been going, man, the brain is not really something you want to play with, man. So if he's not healthy, yeah. don't throw him out there. If it's a concussion, you let him heal 100%. And I know the league is taking concussions way more serious now. So um, I'm assuming within the next, you know, by Friday or Saturday, we'll, he'll, we'll hear if both is available or not. You bet. And I just want to remind our listeners again, we're recording this on Wednesday. So uh, don't hold it against Sir Ray if uh, you get to Friday and turns out Joey Bosa is or isn't playing. So you can put that on me. <laughs> um, Thank you. <laughs> at the running back spot, um, as you probably know, uh, Kalen Balaj was legendarily bad for the Dolphins last year. I, I watched yeah. him. I watched him in the Chargers last game, and he was he was being a lot more decisive, making cuts. Uh, you know, they lost Austin Eckler, another injury for them a couple of weeks ago. He'll be out this game too. And Kalen Balaj, Joshua Kelly, um, a couple other guys back there. How, how do you see the running backs? Uh, how do you see the, the carries being divvied up there? Well, Austin, uh, with, uh, as you, you said, Austin Eckler uh, not slated, I think, to come back around week 13 or 14. Um, funny story, before I get to your question, I actually played high school ball against Kalen Blas. It's, uh, he's actually a huh. very talented dude. But um, he was a surprise, man, because like you said, he was bad in Miami. He was not good. He was not a good running back. And I don't know if it was just the system or the scheme. I'm not sure what it was, but um Justin Jackson was reported to be uh, injured so I think they uh, Anthony Lynn said he's going to sit Justin Jackson out today or tomorrow I believe um I think Kalen Balazs gets the start man he was a pleasant surprise man he ran with good poise man good vision ran hard um man really took care of the ball no turnovers it was, it was like as I was watching a different player it wasn't the same Dolphins running back we all seen last season um I don't know what got into him dude <laughs> But he he looked he looked like a different back. I think Balaz gets to start, and I think you'll see Joshua Kelly, the rookie from UCLA, would be uh, backing him up. Yeah, I have a theory about Balaz. It's kind of the same one with Herbert, and and why he's been successful in Miami last year. They ran a lot of I formation with Chandler Cox at fullback, and I, I don't think that fit Balaz very well. And this type of offense, when I saw him get some bigger gains in the last game, he was able just to get the carry, make one move, and go forward. If if he can do that, he's got the skill set to be able to do that. So it'll be a fascinating matchup there with Kalen Blige returning to Miami. I 100% agree. He, again, looked like a different back. Um, didn't ask him to do too much. Right? He obviously doesn't know 100% of the offense because he's been there for, what, two weeks, if that. Um, but he knows mm -hmm. enough. Man. He, he knows enough to, to, to see ball, get ball, make, make your decision, and go. He Like you said, he, he ran very, very well. 
was really surprised how he looked on Sunday. Hopefully I can, you know, we see another good performance like that. I like Miami's defense, man. It's going to be a good matchup. I think it is too. Uh, and so, Ray, looking at the Chargers' offensive line, they've they've had some problems up there. Uh, Trey Turner was inactive for the last game. Brian Bulaga also left the last contest too. Again, we're recording this on Wednesday. Any thoughts on whether or not they're going to be a go for Sunday? And if not, what's kind of the backup plan for them? Man, I, as far as Bulaga goes, it was a back injury, and I haven't heard much about it since. I don't think Trey Turner – Trey Turner may have played one or two games all year, and he's so talented. It's, again, just the injury bug for whatever reason, the football guy don't don't like the Chargers. But um, Storm Norton, the guard, I believe he's at right guard now, he's been a pleasant surprise. Um, we know about Sam Tevy uh, will probably be playing right tackle, that Brian Bulaga is out. Trey Pipkins will may be on the left, or it may be flop. I can't remember. They, I, we, have, we have a lot of dudes, men, you know, playing swing position. Um, but the most pleasant surprise to me has been Storm Norton at guard. I believe he plays right guard. Um, the plan, I believe, if Blaga can't go, it may be Sim, Tevy, or Trey Pipkins at right tackle. Um, obviously, pouncey has been on IR the center, right? So we've been trying to, you know, fluctuate, you know, and guys in and out of the lineup since, you know, camp, basically. Yeah, I mean, Chargers are certainly unlucky. Like like you said, Mike Pouncey at center is also an injury reserve. And, and the amazing thing is – it's not necessarily with the Chargers like you get into October or November and you start to have guys go down and you say, okay, anybody in the everybody in the league's going through that. It's it's like August and September that bites them every year. Every single year, I've, I have a buddy who's a Chargers fan and he just always tells me, man, don't expect to go into the season fully healthy because <laughs> in my young 20, 23 years of living and my whole life of being a fan of the team. Somebody's going to go down. It's just whatever. I don't know if you need to get rid of the medical staff. We need to find a new you know, injury prevention staff. I don't know what it is, but it's <laughs> always early on in the season. It's, and it's always a key player. It's never just a fifth-round, sixth-round guy. It's always somebody who yeah. plays a vital role on the roster. That That's what hurts the most. Right, yeah, and they're key players too, like, like you said. So, you know – Personally, I feel like the Chargers are due for a win here. And if even if they don't get it against the Dolphins here, I think they've got the Jets the following week. So they're, they're going to get one here soon. What is your score prediction, Saray, for this game? For this game, oh man, I'm going to say 27-24 Miami wins a close one. Got it. That would be right in line with uh, Vegas, uh, who has Miami favored by three. Thank you very much, uh, Saray, for joining us here on the Fin side, breaking down the Chargers roster. That's going to do it for our segment here. Um, you can follow Saray on the Draft Brawl podcast. Also, he, he follows and covers the NFL draft and the Chargers with the firstpick.com. Be sure to check him out. And you can follow Paul and I. On the Fin side, on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, iHeartRadio, I'm Brian Cat NFL, and Paul is Fanatic underscore pick. And if it's not on the right side and it's not on the left side, it is on the Fin side. So, Lodi, take us home. It ain't the left side or the right side, and it must be the Fin side. Fin side. It ain't the left side or the right side, right side. and it must be the Fin side. Listen, Dolphins fans across the land all tuning in to see what Brian